Hello and welcome back to Stack Scepter. This is your boy, uh, and today we are going to start a new course, which is HTML course. Basically, I'm going to teach you how to make a website. So let's get into it. So first of all, what is HTML? Well, basically, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. This is a standard markup language for creating web pages and web applications. Well, you can say that it is used to describe the structure of web, web pages using a process called markup. Now, HTML consists of elements, and those elements are the building blocks of any HTML page, and they're represented by tags. Let me tell you about the basics of HTML structure. Well, you can also call it as a boilerplate. This is what a boilerplate looks like. Now, now, if you look at this, this is the HTML tag. It basically tells the browser that this is an HTML, HTML page, and everything begins from here. Now, the next, next tag, it's the head tag. Now, this contains meta information about the document. The head tag also contains a link to the styling sheets, the fonts that you might be using on your web page, and even the JavaScript that you're using. Now, the head tag also has the title document. As you can see over here, the title document. Now, the title element, it has the title element, which specifies the title for the document, and, can be, and it can be seen as a text on the tab that you open on the browser. All right. Now, the body tag also contains content that is visible to the viewer of your page. As you can see that it contains these h1 tag, the paragraph tag, also known as p tag. And finally, another p tag. Okay, now, this, this is what, this is the basic structure of a, of a HTML. Okay, it's the basic structure of HTML, the basic browser. Now let's get into the code on how to create your first web page. As you can see, this is the code. Here comes the doc type, the HTML, the head. Now, I'm going to type something in the title. Let's say, what is up, people? Now, this is my title. All right. So, what I'm going to type here, this, oh, man. This is my first web page. Voila. Now, we have ourselves a basic web page. Now, all we got to do is go to File and save as I'm just going to name this first web page and there it is you have to save it as a .htm extension okay go ahead save now we're as you can see we saved it on the desktop I'm going to double click it and there it is this is my first web page now as you can see this line this is the line that we typed here this is my first web page here, this is it. So whatever I type here, it's going to come over here. So that was it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed my short video. If you do like these videos, give me a thumbs up. Comment down below, and please do subscribe. Hello, and welcome back to all the dudes and dudesses that are watching this video. I'm back with another video on web development. Man, I really hope that you guys are enjoying the series. Now, in our previous video, I told you guys about the about how to make a web page, and that was pretty plain and simple. You know, you just had to type some code on the text editor, and you just just save the file and open it up in any of the web browsers. So now let's move on to the next topic, and that's all about elements. So this video is going to be about elements. Now the first element that I'm going to tell you is about the doc type element. Now, what is this element? Well, the doc type declaration represents that the file you're working on is a document type. And it also helps the browser to display web pages correctly. Well, you can say that it can only be seen once at the top of the page before any HTML tags. All right. Now finally, I'll add that the doc type declaration is not case sensitive. So it's, it's so this is all about elements. I'm going to tell you guys more, but it, it's a pretty short video, but I'm just trying to take this stuff in pieces so that you guys understand it well. So that was all for today. 
Please have a good day, drop a like, and please do subscribe. Hello and welcome back to Zack Scepter. I hope you are having a good day. Okay, so you can see that this is how HTML actually looks like. It's, a, it's an example. If you're working with HTML, this is a basic example of how your web page might look. Be aware that a website is basically made up of three components. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS is in charge of making your web page look beautiful. For example, the colors you're using as the background, or the way your images are arranged. This is all managed and done by CSS. After that comes JavaScript. But before we move on to JavaScript, I have an example for you. Look at this web page. You can see that there is an image in the middle, and also there is an image at the bottom. This is all being done by CSS. You can also see that there is dynamic colors. This is also being done by CSS. Okay, moving on to JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is used for making your page more active or dynamic. Okay, that's pretty simple. Let's consider an example. If you click on a button on a web page, then that button is going to do whatever it does because of JavaScript. If there was no JavaScript, that button would do nothing. At the end, we have hypertext markup language. Now, what is hypertext markup language? Well, you know what that is, but in a website, what does it do? Well, it basically provides the structure of the web page. That is all it does. Let's consider the first block. You can see all these blocks. The first block is website, and all these blocks are representing the web pages that are linked with this website. So it's forming sort of a hierarchy. So I hope you guys like this video. Please do comment down below and let me know what kind of videos I should further. Hello and welcome back to Stack Scepter. I hope you're having a great day. So, let's uh, continue where we left off last time. Um, I was telling you about the components of the uh, HTML structure and all that stuff, Java and all those languages that are involved in, in web development. So, today I'm going to be telling you how to add images to your web page and how can you increase or decrease the size of a line. For example, you can see over here, this is the H1 tag. Right, I'm going to copy this and paste it over here. So this is the first line, right? Um, I'm going to write this as H2 and I'm going to write something like this is the second line. Alright, and let's go to the next line and write H3. This line is smaller than H2. Alright, let's go to the next line and we are going to write H4. Okay, now you understand that as we increase the numbers then the size off the line increases or it decreases right okay okay and we have the fifth line out of all the lines this line is going to be the smallest Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, just save this to my desktop and I'm going to write it as basics.html. Alright, uh, I saved it on the desktop and alright, uh, this is, uh, where is it? I thought I saved it on the desktop. I'm pretty sure. Just give me a minute. Let me save this again. Okay, okay, okay. Desktop, basic status, HTML. 
actually sitting somewhere over here. Oh, it's over here. Damn, I'm so blind. Okay, so I saved the file as an HTML extension. Alright, so as you can see that, if we compare this with this, the first line is the biggest. Right? This is the first line. And the second line, well, look, look over here. There, this is something important to note. Both the H1 lines are at the same size, but as the add, but the H2 line is comparatively smaller, and the H3 line is pretty small. All right, and H5 is the smallest out of them all. So as you can see, as we increase the numbers ahead of this, the size of, of the line that you're going to write increases. Let's do an experiment. So what happens? If I write four over here, what do you think? Is this is the size of the line going to increase or is it going to decrease? I'm going to write the same line. Out of all the line, this line is going to be what? All right. So just click on save all and reload this page. All right. So you can see that this. Had the size has increased, right? Now, if we uh, try to copy this, Control C and then Control V, and then save all. Okay, then reload this page. Now, both of these tags are of the same size, right? This H4, this H4, this H4. So, if you keep increasing the number, the size is going to decrease. All right, moving on to the second part of the video. Now you're going to learn how to add images. For example, I'm going to write a paragraph first. Let's write a paragraph. You know how to write a paragraph, right? Just add these symbols and start writing a paragraph. I am going to add an image. Or maybe I'll be adding multiple images to this web page let me just drag this over here all right so i'm going to save all and reload all right there's the paragraph uh full stop please look at the image look at the beautiful image below all right so it is time for me to add the image what is the sign text what are what is the command for doing that you're going to write img right src is equal to these things i've already downloaded some images um these are the images i'm gonna the first let's add this image so you just have to write the name of the file. So um, the name of the file that I'm adding is images.jpg. So images.jpg, right? All right, so save all and uh, go to your HTML file and reload. Dorica, yeah. We've uh, successfully added an image. And that was what, what we were trying to accomplish today trying to add images and decreasing or increasing the size of the lines, right? So basically we learned how to decrease the size of the lines. So if you increase the numbers next to the H tag, right? So the size of the line decreases as you increase the number. And you also learned how to add an image. So the basic command for that was the simple sign text, right? The simple line image src is equal to whatever. And if I want to write, if I want to add another image, all right, so I'm going to write the name of that image. Let's, what's the name of this image? Bam, bam. Uh, how did I, okay, so the name of this image is bam, bam. Um, save all. And let's go to this. All right, now you can see there are two images on the web page. So look, the web page over here, it looks beautiful, right? I mean, look at this. You've got two beautiful images and the lines. It's beautiful. So now you learn how to add multiple images, right? So what if I tell you, I want to adjust the size of the image. 
let's say I want to decrease the size of this image to 100 times 100 megapixels. So what I'm going to do, height is equal to, uh, let's say 100 pixels, and the width is equal to 100 pixels as well. Uh, there is a little mistake over here. 100 pixels. Right. Let's add the px at the end. And close this up. Alright. Uh, save all and let's reload this. I think I made a little bit of a mistake. Mm -hmm. 100 pixels. Why isn't it working properly? What did I forget? That is equal to this. I don't know. Let me check it out. I do this and then save all. And then reload this page. Give me a minute, please. that I was missing. Save all and let's reload the page. Oh yeah, it worked. I'm sorry about that a little bit of a problem that I had a face. Yeah, so uh, I want to change the size of these mountains. This is a mountain, you see. It's become smaller. So if you want to increase the height or width, just write PX at the end and you can play with the numbers. So if I write over here 900, right? And then if I click on save all and reload this page, and now you can see that the picture has become very big. So I'm going to readjust it to a beautiful size. So let's say 200. I mean, 200 is a great size, right? What do you guys think about that? And save all and then just reload. So you can see the picture looks pretty beautiful. The picture looks pretty beautiful. Uh, let's change the height of the second picture. ACIGC height is equal to... Uh, Let's keep this as 200 pixels, right? The same size. So this is the height of the second picture. I'm keeping the, the heights of both the pictures the same. And now I'm going to save all and let's uh, reload the page. Now both the sizes are of the same height. I want to now what I'm going to do. I want both pictures to have the same width as well. Width is equal to 200 as well. All right, and the same thing I'm going to do over here. Width is equal to 200. And then what I'm going to do is save all and uh, reload. And now you can see that both the pictures are of the same width. So that was all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please do like, subscribe, and drop a comment down below. Welcome back to Stack Scepter. I'm back with another video and today we're going to continue our series. So our next topic is line breaks. And after that we're going to study about HR tag and how to add a link to a website. But both, all those things are going to be at the end. First we start with a line break. So what is a line break? A line break is actually a tag. All right. Uh, and this tag breaks the line. Now what do I mean by that? Let's take an example. So I'm going to write over here h2 tag. I'm going to write this line has no line breaks. All right. And then we're going to end this tag. All right. So control S and this line has no line breaks. So this is a line that I just wrote. And now what I'm going to do, I am going to write another tag h3. Okay. So this line has a line break uh, to avoid some confusion 
I'm going to write sentence, okay? So this sentence has a line break. And then I'm going to end this sentence, right, in Control S. But look, uh, I haven't put the line break uh, symbol, the, the tag. So the line break tag is with this, BR. Uh, so this is it. Let me just make clear. So this is the line break tag. Now this sentence and this sentence has been divided. All right. So this sentence is going to be on the on this line, and the next this sentence is going to be on the next line. So Control S and uh, look, this sentence has a line break. So this is the first line and. The second sentence is on the second line. So this is a, a, a line break. It's pretty simple. Like, uh, why do we use it? Or why don't we just uh, type something on the next line, right, without using the line break? Well, um, you can do that, but if you want to go through this hassle as well, well it's up to you. I mean, it, it's, it's totally up to you if you want to use the line break. I mean, uh, and why do we use the line breaks? Well, they're used for... Well, if you're writing a letter or an application, you know, you, you're, you're writing the initial lines where you write uh, to the principal or to the company or whoever you're writing the letter or application to, right? So there's a line break at every, after every sentence. So you can use this line break for, for that purpose. Anyways, now I want to make this uh, look a little bit more beautiful. How do I do that? Well, uh, the second thing I told you we'd be learning today is the HR tag. Now, the HR tag adds a line, okay? You can add this line anywhere. So you can see that this is the line that has been added. Now, this line is not so clear. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to write put a line at the end. How do you put a line? Well, it's simple. Just write HR and then Control S or write Reload. Now, you can see that this line has appeared. And it's a pretty fun, uh, it's a pretty fun tag to play around with the HR tag. And finally, we're going to learn how to add a link on your web page to another website. How do I do that? As you can see, this is a demo. Uh, let me just copy this and or cut this from here. So I'm going to put this after the line. So what you're going to just just going to do is that you're going to write this, the A tag, and then you're going to write href is equal to inverted commas. Okay, uh, let me remove this as well. Okay, so this is the basic sign text. Uh, you got this symbol, the A tag, all right? And let me remove this as well. So this is where the A tag starts, and this is where the A tag ends with this slash, okay? And in between, you have to add href is equal to inverted commas, all right? And uh, if I... So this is it. And in between the inverted commas, you add the website link. So this is the link to my website. And after that, if you want to write something, if you want to guide people, what kind of link is this? So I'm going to write this link leads you to my website. All right, so to make it more beautiful, uh, this went on the next line. So I want it on, I want it on this line. All right. So uh, to make it more beautiful, I'm going to add the HR tag again, and Control S, and this didn't work. And why would that happen? Uh, there it is. We have a small blender. There it is. So this link leads you to my website. Uh huh. Yeah. So I'm not connected to the uh, internet right now. Anyways. Uh, Whenever you click on this link, it's going to lead you to the internet or whatever this link leads to, right? So this is my website. So you're, if, you, if I click on this, I'm going to reach my website whenever I have the internet back on. So this was uh, it for today. I hope you understood well. Uh, Stack Scepter over and out. Take care, pals. Hello and welcome back to Stack Scepter. I'm back with another video and this time we're going to learn how to use an image as a link to another website. So let's get to it. So first, let's create our document, our web page. Alright, so exclamation mark, doc type, and then we have the HTML. Alright, 
So, since you guys are pretty familiar with this stuff, so I'm just gonna get to the main. I'm I'm gonna skip most of the stuff, okay? Or I think I should do it again. Um, that would be better, you know. Everything would be revised, sort of. Okay, so let's name this as adding. No, 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 no. That is uh, using image as a link to. All right, link to a website. So this is going to be our title, and uh, so what is the first step? So first I need an image, which I already have on my computer. So I, uh, I'm gonna be using that image, and so let's get to it. So all right, so A, okay, this is the wrong tag. It is just A. All right, so how do we add, first I need the link. So for that I'm gonna use href. So I'm adding the link to my website, stack scepter dot code dot blog okay all right since i've added this uh the next step would be to add the image right so let's add the image uh, okay so the name of my image is sample dot jpg all right it's in jpeg form i already have it on my computer and let's set the dimensions the next step but before we do that, let's uh, see what this, what our web page looks like. And I'm gonna save it on our on the desktop and name it as demo.html. All right. Okay. So let's go to the desktop. Uh, where is it? Let me just uh, edit this view. Okay. Exit uh, full screen. Okay. Where is it? Ah, oh, yes. Uh, all right. So here it is. So now you can see that uh, this is the image that I'm using. Uh, it's a beautiful image of a laptop, right? It's a, it's a, it looks so beautiful, to be honest. You know, I just want to buy this laptop. So yeah, so this is the image that I added on our webpage, but it's too big. So we have to set the dimensions, all right? So let's go back to this and uh, full screen, okay? So I want to set the dimensions. So first, uh, let's see, what should we set the height to? Let's set it to uh, 500 pixels, all right? I'm using the unit pixels. You can use other units if you want. Anyways, uh, yeah, so let's make it uh, the same width and height. Okay, so this should, uh, this should fix this. Let's reload the page. All right, uh, this is fixed now. So we have uh, reset the dimensions of our picture. So now what I want to do, I want to make this web page more beautiful. Now how do I do that? Well, first I'm going to add, uh, I'm thinking about adding some lines, you know. Uh, I, I want to add a line over here beneath the photo and uh, above the photo. I want to add a line above and beneath the photo. So how do I do that? Well, let's see. As you remember in my previous video, I told you how to do that. You just need to use the HR tag, okay. I'm using it above the link and below the link, okay. So control S and then we reload this. Uh, all right, so you can see that this, these two lines have been added beneath and above the picture. So our web page is looking beautiful. And now what I want to do, this just doesn't look appropriate. You know, this picture should be in the middle. That will make it look more beautiful. Uh, before we do that, I think our, we need some headline. Like we need a heading. Like if someone visits this web page, how is he gonna know what is the uh, title of the web page, right? So let's, how do we add that? Uh, we're gonna use the H1 tag. Uh, and inside that we're, give me a minute, H1, okay. All right. So what we're gonna write here, this is the tutorial. No, 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 it should be something interesting. Stag, scepter, all right. Stag, scepter website link with picture all right so let's see how that looks yeah looking good looking good okay so i don't think i should make this all capital it's not it's looking hideous stag scepter stag scepter website with picture all right so that looks beautiful let's add let me add some root of commas so make it look more uh Interesting. Okay, stacks up the website for picture. Now that looks beautiful, my friends. All right, so now we have this, and now what I want to do is uh, I want to 
uh, adjust the I, I already adjusted the dimensions. I want to make come make this picture go into the middle. You know, so I want to center align it. How do I do that? Well, guys, in order to do that, you need to move to the head part. This is the head part, and there you have to use the tag. Uh, it's known as style, and in between this tag. You're gonna add something uh, before we do anything to this. You have to, first of all, you need to use a style tag, which we did. Alright, like this. And now what we're gonna do, we need to make an image container. Right, so first uh, let me name this as uh, that image container. Alright. So this is our image container. And inside this, you just have to write text, uh, align, center. Yeah, this was it. Text, align, center. Yeah, this was it. And then just uh, put this. Okay, and uh, now we need to enclose this, uh, what do we call this? Uh, this inside the div thing okay this div tag and this also div all right so uh this should work uh, and there is another thing that i need to add div the name of her class is uh image container yeah image the here all right so uh this should work so let us check it out if this works so let me Reload. So yeah, it works. Uh, the picture has been center aligned, okay, and uh, stack scepter has also been center aligned with this. So uh, that is how you center align a picture and the text. So what if I want uh, the alignment to be on the left side? So I simply write left and control S and then... So you see the picture along with the text has been left aligned and... Um, Similarly, if I want to send it to the right side, just control S and reload and the picture is on the right side. So it actually looks beautiful in the center. Uh, so I'm going to move it back to the center. Alright guys, so uh, I have a beautiful web page over here. So mission accomplished. Uh, I hope you guys uh, do well with this, okay? You, you meet your... The Stack Scepter. I'm back with another video, and this time we're going to continue the series with our next topic, which is lists. Well, uh, what are lists, and how do we work with them in HTML? Well, basically, web developers use HTML lists to group items. Now, what is a syntax? It's it's pretty simple. You start with the li, okay, and these comparison symbols, and end with the li and the the front slash. So so first, let's create a document, an HTML document. Uh, so new file, and uh, okay. So first, uh, let us save this as uh, save. Uh, I'm gonna save this on the desktop, and uh, let's name it demo.html. Okay, saving it on the desktop. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, how do we use the uh, list tag? It's pretty simple. Just type li and you're going to get this li. So I'm just going to write down some random list of things, all right? And uh, let's just control C and uh, control V. Let's name this course something else, for just for the sake of it. English course is all right. So now that's looking decent. And now let's reload the page. There it is. This is how you use the list tag. But it's not looking beautiful. I want this to look beautiful. How do I do that? I'm going to have to add a, a heading over here, something that looks uh, different. Uh, so let's add, I'm, I'm thinking about adding the name of my website, which is Tag Scepter. All right. Oh, damn it. That's the title. That's the page title. Uh, let's use the H1 tag. It's over here. All right, uh, stag scepter, stag stag scepter, and let's reload it, and that looks beautiful. I want to make it even more beautiful. I want this text, this heading, to come into the center, and for that we're going to use the, the CSS styling. How do we do that? So first, you just remove this comparison um, symbol, okay, and you type style 
all right style is equal to and this automatically comes to you and now uh, we have to align the text align text right so that's for text aligning it automatically finishes the code and we want this in the center all right that's it now let's reload this all right beautiful so this is looking beautiful so this is the sign text okay this is a syntax for making it looking more beautiful it's basically css and yeah you have to end so the uh, the comparison symbol if that we were using here you see if i do this it's not going to work you see it's showing me the text so this symbol is not going to be used here okay you just remove that symbol from there and that's it uh, that symbol is actually being used over here you see this is the symbol if I do this it's not gonna work so we remove this the symbol from here from the h1 tag and we put it over here and it should work now all right uh, let's move on uh, I want to give this a beautiful color as well so I'm going to change the color as well so after the semicolon we're not going to do anything just after the semicolon you have to type type color and inside the color there's a bunch of colors a lot of colors you have red you have black I'm gonna go with wheat because it looks beautiful and reload the page all right this is wheat color I know it's not uh, that prominent but it's gonna be in a second and now this is looking good I want the size to increase a little bit how do I do that pretty simple we have this font um, code and you have the fonts uh, just a it's actually font size and now um, the unit for measurement uh, is uh, REM that's used in HTML for REM this is the font size so remember that after every semicolon I'm adding different things okay different code after every semicolon this is for color adjusting the color this is for adjusting the size this is for aligning the text all right so let's reload and now it looks much better way better okay and um, in order to make this prominent I'm gonna have to change the background so to change the background I just have to to write a small piece of code and how will I do that well you just move towards the head again all right so we're done with this code now let's move towards the head and uh, we're gonna write here style again all right so we have style here so I'm gonna remove all this stuff okay give some space so that you guys can understand this well and now you just have to write body and then this uh, these columns uh, I'm sorry these are parentheses you just add these parentheses okay all right inside the parentheses I'm gonna write background and then you have the URL Damn, I keep forgetting this all right we're going good and then you have to write these uh, small brackets and all right so I already have an image saved on my computer so I'm gonna write down the name of that image all right here it is uh, background image all right so let's see if this works all right so let's see if this works control s yeah so it works but as you can see that the image is being repeated multiple times so in order to avoid that uh, just write back and you have the background and I don't want any repetitions so control s well god damn it no repeat Give me a second, people. All right, so we'll fix that error later on. Uh, let's just move ahead with our list. All right, so this looks good, and um, basically, uh, this is it. Uh, this is how you use the lists. All right, and if you want to, you can also use CSS on these lists. And how do you do that? Um, just copy something from here, uh, like style. If you want the list in the center, I'm just going to copy this whole thing, okay? Copy, and then we're going to paste. It's the same process, repeat the symbol, uh, remove the symbol from here, and then style. All right, so if you do this, uh, a bit of a problem, a bit of a problem. You just have to adjust the brackets over here, and I think this should work. 
Alright. Now this should work, I think. Hmm. Now that's weird. Okay, where am I going wrong over here? Mm -hmm. Let me think again, people. I'm going wrong somewhere over here. Again. Apparently. Okay, no, 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 this is not good. Oh yeah, inverted commas. Damn it. It was actually the inverted commas. Uh, I need the inverted commas over here as well. So let me just remove this. Ah, there it is. Okay, so I was going wrong with the inverted commas. Uh, similarly for this, uh, just paste the whole thing. Again, okay. Control C and uh, remove this thing. And uh, there it is. If you control S, this, and... Uh, so this is basically the same thing as Stack Zephyr, but we don't want most of this stuff. So I'm gonna remove some things. We don't want, we want the normal size, so I'm gonna remove size from both of these. All right, uh, we don't want the color V, and um, we don't want these uh, text to be on the center. We want it on the left. So, oh yeah, yeah right. So that's it for to today, guys. It wraps up my video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hello and welcome back to Stack Scepter. I'm back with another video, and we're going to continue the series with our web development course. Well, today we're going to start learning how to make a registration form. Well, I'm not going to make the registration form in one video. I'm going to divide it into parts so that you guys can understand it well and learn better. Well, the main focus of this video is to just make the first heading of the registration form. You know, the, the, the heading that appears over here, the title of the form. So I'm just going to make that and now I'm going to try to design that. So that our registration form looks beautiful. So let's get to it. Okay. So let's start. Mm -hmm. We have HTML. Okay. Mm, let's erase all this unnecessary stuff. And create some good spacing. I actually don't need this. So we're creating a registration form. Okay. Now, all our work is going to be inside the body. So first, uh, let us create the uh, H1 tag, right? So I'm going to name this as... Uh, what should I name it? Should I call it Stack Scepter? Should I call it what? Uh, so, I don't know actually. I don't know what to call this. So, let me call it um, Stack. No, no, not Stack. Let's say I'm, I'm offering some computer courses. Or, uh, yeah, some sort of courses. Okay. And uh, let's end that. All right, so looks good, neat and clean. This is the heading. This is gonna be our heading. So let's look at how it's looking. Okay, not beautiful. It looks ugly, to be honest. And I hate ugly registration forms. So we're gonna make it a little more beautiful. So first, mm, let's erase this. Okay in space. Now I'm going to create an attribute known as data shadow is equal to inverted commas. Okay. And inside this I'm going to write the same thing what I wrote on the right side. It's computer courses. Okay. And then just end this over here. Okay. Doing good. Doing good. Hmm. Okay, we're going well. Mm. So this is our heading, and I have to make this beautiful. Because this, this does not look good, all right? So uh, let's start 
with the process of beautifying this. First, let me clear up some things. Let's create some space. All right, I guess that is enough space. So we're gonna start from the body, and um, let's go ahead, guys. Let's do this. Uh, first, what I want to do: create this style thing, okay? Style, and then create some space again. All right. So inside style, I'm gonna import. So there is a beautiful website that offers beautiful fonts. I'm just gonna write down the web address of that website. You know, it's a beautiful website, to be honest. The uh, I mean, it offers such good uh, fonts that you won't believe how beautiful they are. All right, so this is the uh, web address. Where is this? Okay. Now, the name of the font is equal to, is, uh, oh, yes. Uh, did it show me this? Righteous? No. You have to be very careful with the font name because if this goes wrong then I'm doomed you know the font has to be correct okay all right so moving on let's uh, go ahead now let's start typing guys you can just forward the video if you like um there's a lot of code to be done over here because uh, what I'm technically doing is I'm making uh, this hideous form beautiful alright so I need to do some CSS and stuff and make it beautiful okay okay now let's create these brackets and let's eat something as well mm -hmm. alright this is delicious okay so margin should be set to zero the padding should also be zero I mean, you can um, play around with this stuff you can change the padding you can change the box sizing. Okay, border box, here it is. Thank you very much, Sublime Text, I love you. Yeah, this Sublime Text is awesome. Auto completes the code, you know? It just gives you what you want at the right time. Okay, good. Mm, what if we try this, does this look better? Mm, no. We want it at the top. Okay, then that looks good. So from uh, from the top left, we're going to the. Uh, I think we're. Um, I'm gonna try to make this in the middle. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send all this to the middle. All right, so let's move on HTML and uh, let's work on the body, guys. It's time to work on the body. Okay, so the height and 10%. Okay, now let's keep the height at 10%. Okay, now let's see. Does that look good? Okay, okay, okay. Moving on, moving on. Uh, the height is set to 10%. I mean, you can change this. It's not going to affect a lot. Okay, let's play, play around with the body. Now, I want the text to be aligned in the center. Okay. What if I... Uh, no, no, no. On the right side, it's going to look very bad. So, probably on the left. What do you guys think? Now, let me know down in the comments. Should the text be on the left, on the right, or in the middle? Okay, now this is HSLA. Basically, there is color, saturation, hue, and a lot of more stuff. You know, this uh, gives a different types of colors. The HSLA. I mean, there's more that you can try. There's other types as well. You can play around with the colors if you want. And, uh, okay, now let's see. Does this look good? Okay, that is satisfying. No, I don't care. Okay. Okay, now this looks a little bit satisfying because it's in the middle. But I still have a lot of work to do. You know, I gotta make this font beautiful. Add some kind of animation or stuff. And uh, the background. The background is hideous. I mean, the white background just doesn't match with this heading, okay? I mean, damn it. It's a registration form. It has to look beautiful. Right? Okay, so the body. Now let's. The, the body is our main concern, guys. You gotta work with the body. You, know, you gotta work and make the body beautiful. Okay? Yeah, okay, now let's see. This is where the content is gonna be. Uh -huh. Forgot something over here? Yeah, okay. Doing well, doing well, guys. Doing well. Keep up with me. Okay, display inline block. 
Alright, this gave me... Okay, okay, Sublime Text, you gotta help me here, buddy, you gotta help me. You gotta help me, buddy. Okay, so we're gonna align the text in the middle. Okay, and we're gonna keep the font size to, uh, font size. We're gonna keep the font size to zero over here, you know, because if we mess this up over here, we're doomed, guys, we're doomed. Okay, so height, 100%. Okay, so far, so good, so far, so good. Yeah, so far, so good. Um, let's move on. I hope you guys are understanding this well, because um, I'm not going to explain the code a lot, because this is a, a sort of a practical series. I'll create another playlist where I'll upload the conceptual stuff, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what all this means. This is basically all practical stuff, you know. If you want to apply for a job, or if you want to start your own, stuff, freelancing stuff, you, you should learn practical coding. Because the conceptual stuff, I mean, you can learn the conceptual stuff later on if you want to uh, go to the, towards the education sector. That's that's good, that's good as well. Okay, so display. Now we're gonna work with the display, okay? Inline block. Here it is. This is exactly what. I think I should keep the color white, okay, yeah. That looks good. A little, a little bit of a mistake over here. Color, no, not white smoke. All right, so font family. Now, this is important. This is important, guys. Uh, the family that we use over here is righteous, right? So you have to use the same family name over here. The font family has to be same because we're talking about the talking about the H1 tag. This is where did our H1 tag go? Oh yeah. So this is going to be the font of computer courses, okay? So, oh yes, I guess I did it right. Righteous, okay. And then we have serif. Serif, okay. And let's move on. And then we have the font size. Let's not mess around with the font size that much. So you guys remember that the font size was 3EM. And the text shadow. Text shadow. All right, so text shadow. Uh -huh. Text shadow, text shadow, text shadow, text shadow, point zero three EM, okay. Right, point zero three M is going to be the best for this, I think. Probably I should use HSLA because uh, there's a lot more stuff, you know, I want to play around with the colors, keep it to 30, 40% would be nice, and uh, what about this, what about this, guys? Um, let's keep this at, what do you say, uh, 0.1%, what about that, what about that? I guess that's gonna be good. 0.1% sounds, uh, promising, I, I don't know, man, I don't know. Does this sound promising to you guys? Wow. And everything is gone. I guess I did a little bit of a mistake, people. Anyways, uh, it's gonna come back. Don't worry, guys. It's gonna come back. All right, so let's move on to where it's the H1 after. Don't worry, guys. The text is going to come back, okay? Don't worry about it. Even though it's gonna come back. Let's check. Did I make any mistake right here? 0 0.03. Okay, and uh, yeah. This is okay. Alrighty. 40%, 50%. Uh, well, that's magic. That's called magic, people. That is called magic. Content. Okay. Now the attribute name. We set. We have to uh, write the same attribute name, which is data shadow, which we use down below. You see, this is the attribute name, data shadow. So you have to input the attribute name over here. Okay. Now let's position the attribute. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, should we keep it at relative? No, absolute sounds good. Absolute looks good. Now let's play around with the top. What kind of size do you think I should give it? How about 0 .06 EM? Does that sound good? Yes, it does. Well, sir, that sounds good. And, uh, the left, uh, let's keep it, how much should we position it to the left? I think 0 .06 EM, the same that we did for the top. We're gonna do the same, Rich. Uh, we're gonna do the same for the top and the same for the left. All right. 
And now we also have the Z index, right? Okay, the Z index minus one. Yeah, we don't want that gone wrong. You know, I don't want this to be a gone wrong video, coding gone wrong. Okay, we don't want any text shadow and we want some background image. Alright. We need the background image to a uh, linear gradient. Okay. Linear gradient. And now let's uh, do this uh, 45. I think 45 degree is okay. And I want the, it to be transparent as well. I don't want it to be totally transparent, so I'm gonna keep that to 45%. Okay. And now we're gonna apply some HSLA again. People, we're playing around with the colors. It's important to play around with the colors, remember. Okay, and then we're gonna keep this to 90%. We got the saturation and uh, this, there is one more thing, I don't know, I forgot the name. Okay, 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 and 35% uh, looks good. 35%, let's keep this at 45%. Okay, and uh, let's do the other one now. It's time for the other one. I think I should keep this all the same as well. Control C, and we have the V over here. All right, but I kept that at forty-five percent. I'm thinking about going above. You know, I'm thinking about going ten percent above. You know, forty-five plus ten is fifty-five, right? Basic math. Okay, so fifty-five percent. I'm done at this. Transparent to zero. Let's keep this transparency to zero and we're done with the background image. Alright, so since we're done with the background image, let me see. Oh, that's weird. I hope it comes back, guys. If it doesn't come back, it's gonna be a big blunder. A big blunder by a professional coder. Yeah, professional coder, right? 0 0.05 EM. Okay, let's give it a point zero five. So guys, we're basically uh, setting the size of the background. And you don't want this to be too small. Otherwise, it's going to be a big problem for you. Okay. Okay, let's get background. And then the text comes in. Made of a bit of a blender over here. And this is a blender. Okay, and uh, let's do this again. Now, let's we'll go back to the web kit and uh, text and fill. Okay. Uh, let's keep the color transparent. And uh, I think this will, now let's add the animation. Now the name of the animation is this. It's going to be about 15 seconds long. And uh, linear. Infinite. Yeah. Now let's talk about the keyframes because since we added some uh, animations, if we have to keep the uh, keyframes, we have to set the keyframes. Okay. I'm gonna keep this at zero percent. And uh, now let's position the animation. Okay. Let's position the animation. Alright, alright, going good, looking good. Alright, so we're done with the background position. Now let's do the uh, X, Y, Z. Okay. What in the world? Okay. Background position. And this time it's 100%. And the minus 100%, you know? You gotta keep the minus and the plus in the, in the balance. You know? Just uh, keep both of them in the balance, you know? Don't wanna worry about that too much. Okay, so this is where our style ends. Alright, so I think we're done over here. Okay, now let's remove this. And, um, uh, I guess I did make a mistake. Let me check, where did I go wrong? 
Okay, people, let's look at our final result. Let's see if this looks good. Before that, I'm gonna go through the code once again so you guys can pause the video, okay? And if you wanna code this yourself, you can just pause the video and one by one write down the code. So I'm going very slow, okay? And just you, move, you just move down and this is where the code ends. And this is where the code starts. All right, so let's see, if, okay. So this is how our uh, web page looks, computer courses. And now uh, this is looking extremely beautiful. But what I want is I want this go, to go to the top and I want the size to be a little bit smaller. So we're gonna, we're gonna adjust the settings over here, okay. We have to adjust the settings. So let's uh, minimize the font size and okay, computer courses. Now this is the font size, it looks better. And let's just remove the spaces because the font isn't doing very well if, it, if there are spaces. Okay, now it looks good. Computer courses, now that, that looks promising, that looks beautiful. And if I put these, it's gonna make it look more beautiful. I think there's gonna be a problem, a bit of a problem if I do this. Yes, there is. Okay, so let's move this to, to the top. Now I want this to the top. All right. And where is the height? We have to look for the height. Okay, this is the top, this is the left. Font size, height. All right, here it is. Let's go from 100% to 10%. All right, that's better. I think I want this to be a little lower because, you know? Much better. What if we go to a 20%? Okay, now that looks perfect. So this is the result of our uh, beautiful registration form. It looks beautiful. And uh, you can just check out the code in the video, the positive video. So this is it for today. We'll continue this series. So stack zapper over. Hello and welcome back to Stack Scepter. I'm back with another video. I hope you guys are doing well. Well guys, it's time to make another video about our website series. Today we're going to continue the series. I hope you guys remember what I made in the previous video. Well, uh, it was different. I just changed the text. You know, I, uh, I was written courses over here. Well, I changed it to Stack Zucker. Well, um, we have to... Uh, add some more components down here so it looks more like if a registration form all right so let's begin uh, okay so first what I what I want to do is add um, let me just uh, show you what we did before this is this was all the code that we wrote in the previous video and um, I'm continuing from the body again okay uh, the body is over here over here so this is all inside the body and I'm just giving some space outside of this style, okay? It's outside of the style now because I'm adding different components. I'm going to add the first uh, a blank, some sort of a blank. I'm thinking about a blank, you know? A person enters his name, okay? His first name. So let's first add a div and remove this. I just removed the comparison symbol. Um, now I'm going to use ID and this is used for selecting stuff when you're styling, okay, in CSS. Alright. Now, okay, registration form. Okay, uh, looking good. Looking good. Alright, now let's create a, a form. And uh, whatever we're going to do is it's going to be inside the form. All right, um, input type. Okay, so this is what I just did. I just wrote input in and it already gave me what I needed, exactly what I needed. This is the place where the user is going to input stuff. So the input is going to be text because the name is in the form of text, right? And this name is going to be the first name. First name, all right, let's make the initials capital. I don't know, 
it doesn't matter, I guess. Alright, so if a name is going to be the first name, and we're also going to be needing a placeholder. Alright, and um, let's name that placeholder. Uh, I'm writing outside. Let's name that placeholder stag. And we need this field as required, okay? This, this is a requirement. Now if you save this and reload this. Alright. Exactly what I needed. And if I type anything over here. Hello. So I don't have, currently have a database. Oh, but it got saved. That's nice. Anyways, uh, so I, I wrote hello over here. So if I write Muhammad. So it's going to be saved. First name Muhammad, hello. So it's, so it's being saved, okay? So this is exactly uh, what I wanted. I'm doing. Uh, we're making progress, people. We're making progress. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful day outside, and I'm sitting on my seat, coding, because I love coding, people. I love it. All right. So um, we need to um, make this more clear. So what we're going to do? We're going to add a label, okay? And this label, uh, we're going to remove the comparison sign and write four. This label is for the first name, all right? The, the same thing over here, so I'm just gonna copy and paste. All right, control C, and then we have the control V. Okay, and uh, so the name is going to be this. This is going to be the name. No, thank you, I don't need it right now. All right, so this is the first name, so you see, let me just explain this. This is your first name. This is the name of your empty, your, of your placeholder, okay? This is the name of your placeholder. So inside the placeholder, um, well, you could also do this. You see, if you don't want anything inside it, you can just simply write this. I mean, that looks better, right? So uh, the name is first name, and the type is text. Okay, so this is the... First name and type is text. And then we created a label for this uh, bracket. This whole box, it's a rectangle. And then on the left side, we added a label. And this is the, 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 the code for adding the label on the left side. You see label four is equal first name. This is actually the name of the input. And then we wrote this. If I change this, so to make things clear, if I write here last, this becomes the last name. So I'm playing around with the label now. Okay? I mean, you can do anything over here. For first name, okay? Now if I mess around with this, you see, this is not going to work. Why? Because the label is, is being created for this name. First name, okay? So this has to be the same. Alright guys, uh, this is it for today's video, um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, please do like, subscribe, and share, and let me know, let, drop a comment down below, and if you enjoy my videos, um, well, peace out, Stack Scepter over and out, take care guys. Hello and welcome back to Stack Scepter, I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm back with another video. So this is where we left off and we're gonna continue. I'm just gonna add another label for, and this time uh, it's gonna be last name. It's gonna be for last name. You know, I could just copy and paste this whole thing and instead of just typing all this. So I'm gonna be needing a last name and also uh, we need a number. So we just have to change some stuff over here. It's going to be changing to last. Alright, there we have it. Looks beautiful. And I'm thinking about adding a WhatsApp number. WhatsApp number, alright? So that looks great. Beautiful. Alright, so WhatsApp number. Okay, so the type is going to be text. It's the same like we did above. Alright? So now we get back to our main thing. So now since we have finished our um, simple things, so let's see how everything looks. Okay, it looks beautiful. All right, so yeah, what is this? First name, first name? Oh, I made a little bit of a mistake. 
I had to change this, which I didn't. Yeah, okay, so there we have it. Alright, so let's see. And reload this, and yeah, that's it. It looks beautiful. Alright, alright. Uh, so I was thinking about um, adding a button over here. The, what is it called? The option button. Where you can select um, an option. Um, I'll tell you what I mean. So first, um, I'm going to add this div. And again, we're going to add the label. Okay. So this time, there's going to be a, different, a little bit of a difference. This time, it's for... Let me just... Uh, sorry, no, no, no. It's not a radio. It's for... Uh, it's for the gender. Alright, it's for the gender. And... Um, the gender... This time, is male. Okay. Alright, so that's it. Let me just back this up. Alright. And now, let's uh, add the input. The input is going to be... Uh, the input is going to be this. It's uh, a mistake again. Alright, so type, uh, you just have to add radio over here, and then you write the name for, this is for gender. Alright, so control S, and we're going to reload this. Well, the option, the button is over there, but I think I forgot. I had to write this over here. Alright, let's reload this. Yeah, it looks beautiful. So there we have it. Uh, the button, but we need two options, right? Because it could be either it could be a male or a female. So this copy and paste this over here and change this to female. Every the rest of it stays the same. Same, and let's reload this. All right, so you can select your gender. You can either be a male or a female. So uh, that is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And please do like, subscribe, and comment down below. Hello and welcome back to Stack Scepter. I hope you're having a great day. Well guys, this is where we left off in the last video. And now I can do pretty much a lot of stuff. I can write my name, my first name, the last name, the WhatsApp number, and obviously I can select the gender. But this form is still incomplete. How do I complete it? Well, I'm going to add these containers, you see? The div containers. So let's start with adding these uh, div containers. Alright, and um, you might want to add the last one over here. Alright. So I'm going to add the last one over here. Okay, and let's save this, and let's reload this. Alright, looks much better, much, much better. So this is how our form is looking, but it's still not looking beautiful. So I have a lot of work to do right now. So uh, I think I have to add another one on here. The, and the final one, we're, we're actually separating all the, uh, these labels so they so that they have their own div tags you know so that we don't run into any problems with our form this is very important people all right what is this oh no thank you very much okay now let's reload this okay much better much better and now it's looking uh, much similar to a form uh, okay so i just have to style this now let's go towards my style.css sheet. I'm going to start with uh, the body first. No, I don't want this. I just want the body. Alright guys, so this is the body of my, uh, what do we call, my form. 
All right, but remember uh, before that, what you need to do is this. Link this style sheet, type in this. You just need to type this um, below the head and above the body, okay? Just write this. So in here, this is the name of the folder, the, the folder that you created, all right? Uh, whatever name that you write for your folder, you just have to type it over here. And then after uh, doing this, control S, and what's, what this is going to do is it's going to connect your HTML form with this style.css, okay? So now you're going to apply CSS so that you can beautify your form. All right, so let's start with the background color. I'm thinking, what should I go with? I'm thinking Poppins. No, actually, Poppins is a font family. And let me check, background color. Um, hashtag 22. Okay. And then, and then comes the font family. Where is it? This is going to be Poppins. Poppins is a beautiful color. Do you guys agree with this? And then we have the font size, which is going to be 1.5 REM. Uh, okay, the, what about the display? I'm going to try to keep it a flex, right? Flex is awesome. And then we have the flex direction, which should be a column. All right, so I'm gonna I'm thinking about justifying the content in the center because that would look beautiful. Okay, come on, let's move on. And um, I think I should align the items uh, in the center. Um, I'm thinking about keeping the minimum height to 100, or I don't know, 200. Um, let's go with 100. Because a hundred looks beautiful. All right, so let me save this. Control S. No, let's reload this. Okay, guys, that was it. Now my form has been centered, and this is all I wanted to do today. So thank you very much. But before that, um, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna tell you about some things before we move on. What is VH? Okay. You need to know what is VH, what is this, hashtag triple, triple two, and what is REM? The div tag is used as a container for HTML elements. Well, this tag is easily styled by using a class or ID attribute. Any sort of content can be put inside the div tag. The class. The class attribute is often used to point to a class name in a style sheet. Well, you might have used REM a lot. Well, it's a unit for... Well, it's basically, it means the root element's font size. And it's going to be used a lot. The flex direction. Well, the flex direction property specifies the direction of the flexible items. items. Hashtag triple two is a hexadecimal color code for a dark shade of a gray. In the RGB color model, hashtag triple two is comprised of 13% red, 13.33% green, and 13% blue. In the HDL color space, hashtag triple two is a hue of 0 degrees, 0% 0 saturation, and 13% lightness. This color has an approximate wavelength of 0 nanometers. VH. VH stands for viewport height, which is the viewable screen's height. 100 VH would represent 100% of the viewport's height, or the full height of the screen. Hello and welcome back to Stag Scepter. Alright, so this is where we left off. So I'm going to start with the next thing, which is the registration form. Okay, so now let's set the position. I want it to be at a, at a relative position. Okay, because relative sounds good. Now, I need to set the padding. Because if there's no padding, it's, it's going to look ugly, right? I don't want it to look ugly. So... After doing the padding, I'm going to set the margins. Well, not just the margin. I actually need the margin top. Okay. Um, let's set this to about 100 pixels. That sounds good. That looks good. 
And finally, the width. I'm going to set the width to a 30%. Alright, so that is it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please do comment down below. Stag Scepter, over and out. Padding. An element's padding area is the space between its content and its border. Padding creates extra space within an element.